Welcome, it's uh, SJ, and uh, I returned to Ragnarok Online recently, and I played the international server, and I'm a healer main, so I play priest. I'm currently archbishop now, I'm working my way towards uh, the fourth job, which is the cardinal. Okay, and today we're going to be rating uh, some of these uh, acolyte skills, and we're going to be rating the acolyte skill tree okay so up to archbishop because it's the stuff that i am familiar with so a little bit of a disclaimer here uh, i could be wrong in some of my takes and i would not be uh going into too much detail because i'm assuming a lot of people already know the skills but for the beginners this video is basically for for beginners and for those who just want to watch the video let's begin Adoramus, it's the bread and butter skill of the Archbishop. It's currently the meta. It's the way that uh, Archbishops get by. Uh, and uh, it's a really powerful skill. So uh, it wasn't a popular build. Okay, so it wasn't a popular, it wasn't meta because of the sheer amount of blue gemstones that you need to use. And of course, uh, you get this is 10 levels right that's 10 skill points right over there that's 10 skill points that are you're not investing on support skills uh, and this blue gemstone if you're going to spam it it's going to add up it's going to be expensive it's going to be really expensive if you're using especially ragnarok is a grindy game we're going to use skills all over and over and over again and this this will start to get uh expensive pretty fast so the only way to like negate this back then was to use a boss card, which is actually a rare card. Okay, so if you're a veteran, you already know this. Uh, mistress card, right? So you slot it on the headgear, you put the headgear on, and all of a sudden, all of the gem sword requirements uh, on certain skills uh, becomes negated, right? Because there are certain skills that use blue gemstone, red gemstone, yellow gemstone, and some of these catalysts, right? So that's the only way. And that shit's expensive so uh this build it wasn't worthwhile to get and of course just as i said uh earlier uh that's 10 skill points that's not going to support skills but in the current release there's an actual headgear where you don't have to put the mistress card on it anymore there's an actual head headgear called uh sacred crown which negates this gemstone requirement uh this is currently the build that i'm running right now so here let me show you how it works I'm currently 179 and look at this. Take a look at that. Take a look at that. No cast Adramus, ultimate power. Just absolutely just deletes everything, okay? So I'm doing like 2 million damage, 1 million to 2 million damage right over here. This is uh, Nog Road 3. Uh, this is in Elmas Plateau, the south of Juno, south uh, east of Juno. So this is my leveling spot right now, 179. And I absolutely crush everything here. So, uh,. It's a powerful spell, and uh, you can like kill entire streams of enemies worth with this skill right over here. Let's actually have uh, it actually has a really wide AOE as well, so as you can see. And look at this! Look at this! Ultimate power right over there. Oh, there's a psychic guy over here. Oh, there's a psychic uh, psychic wave. Okay, so. You get the idea. It's 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 a really powerful skill. It became it became the main the main thing on how on how archbishops get by. So that's uh, interesting to see. So uh, that's the uh, uh, that's the Adoram skill. Uh, that's like yeah, the bread and butter. So moving on, uh, we'll put this as S class because obviously. That's the main thing. Okay, so this next skill is called Anchilla. Okay, in, in Latin, it's handmade, I think. Uh, it's from it's from the angel sprayer, right? In Latin, it's Anchilla Domini, uh, which means here comes the handmade of... Uh, behold, the handmaid of the Lord. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look at the description uh, after getting rid of these oh, freaking ads. Uh... Creates magical stone called Anchilla. When you use, it consumes 10 SP and 1 blue gemstone. When using Anchilla, 
It increases your healing by 15% for 60 seconds and SP recovery by 30% and the property of other almonds becomes neutral. So, okay. This is a utility skill. What, what happens is you take a portion, you sacrifice a portion of your mana and uh, you create the stone, a, a stored form of your mana. And then uh, when you consume it, uh uh you you get back a little bit of your of your sp and increases your sp recovery by 30 percent but this is the most important part it changes the property of your adorama spell into neutral because in the game there are certain enemies that are holy property that are classed as holy property angels and you know heavenly beings like the valkyrie for example uh so you can't hit them with adoramas so what are you gonna do uh, you consume the stone, the Anchilla stone, and all of a sudden your other Ramos becomes neutral. So, so basically, uh, it allows the Archbishop to attack targets that they normally wouldn't be able to. So that's good. So let's put it in S class. It goes hand in hand with other Ramos. Next skill is Angelus. Speaking of Angelus, okay. So this skill is a uh, in, uh, physical defense buff okay so uh, uh there's defense from equipment but there's also defense that you get from your vitality stat so this buff increases that by percentages as you can see here uh but uh on paper that actually sounds great but uh these hp buffs are minuscule in comparison to like current release in classic ragnarok this is a huge thing especially for lobies uh but right now it's it's not a worthwhile skill especially since you get only 49 points in the acolyte skill tree so uh, uh you need to get all of the other ones like heal is already level 10 increase agility is 10 blessing is 10 so those are some of the important skills we'll talk about it later and then you don't have enough uh for a, t a maximum angelus without sacrificing any of these so what usually happens is uh uh, players usually get just level two angels just for because it's a prerequisite of another skill I forgot maybe Magnificat was it Kiri Ellison uh, is 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 uh, two angels is needed okay so after you get two angels and everything else once you get everything else and two angels you get left over with two skill points so you more or less just decide if you want to put uh, two more points in divine protection or two more points in angels to get angels level four which is a bit defense of plus 20 percent that's useful for high vitality uh, characters such as uh dragon knights and paladins um yeah or you can put it somewhere else like uh decrease agility because well, why not where would where would we put it uh maybe in uh, uh, it's it's not good but it's not totally useless either so maybe we'll put it in class c okay we'll 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 adjust it as we go on next skill is this is called the aqua benedicta or holy water this is the only skill that will allow you to create holy water and you need uh if i remember correctly you need an one empty bottle at least one empty bottle per cast of this skill and you need to be standing on water to be able to do this so you're creating holy water the item it's a prerequisite you need it for i kind of forget let's see what do we need it for uh do we need it for magnus exorcismus basically so you need it you absolutely need to have that but is it good Brr. I don't know class d could be like useless stuff right and uh b is like utility stuff that you you need to have i don't know i don't know how to i don't know where to put this let's just put it in d right now it's it's not really something that you use okay so uh, it's just there for the prerequisite and for creating holy water so it's not good but it's not useless okay so let's put it in c <laughs> so d is totally useless i i guess uh next one talking about holy water and shit uh let's uh, talk about aspersio the next skill so uh, this used to be really good 
when you're like partying back in, in classic RO, when you're partying with, with someone who attacks with physical attacks, right? With the one uh, characters that you actually use their weapons to attack, like knights, uh, vit knights, uh, rangers, uh, hunters, yeah, something like that. With bows, yeah, because uh, priests and hunters used to be a really good combo back, back then. I imagine until now. Yeah, and those a single target's weapon with the holy property temporarily. Okay, so that consumes one holy water. So that's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, so let's put it in B. It's not needed, but it's really good because it changes things. Okay, so if like it it, it buffs you and it makes you stronger against uh, uh what is holy strong against? Shadow, property, demon, and dead. Okay, so things like that. Uh, yeah. Next up is what is this? Assumption or the assumption of the Holy Blessed Virgin Mary. Okay. Okay, so places a temporary buff on a single target that doubles as their hard defense. Okay, so a while back we were talking about bit defense, and this is hard defense. I am actually not very sure what hard defense means but i imagine it to be a completely different thing from bit defense so this is defense that you get from something else i guess and hard magic defense okay so death plus 50 received heal amount plus two percent on level one duration 20 seconds so in level five you always get this because it's defense plus 250 it, usually this this is a skill uh, the difference between angelus is this skill you actually feel the difference you actually feel the, you know, if 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 a monster is hitting you for a thousand damage, you'd be like, be hit for six hundred damage, seven hundred damage, eight hundred damage. It depends, you know. This is something that's really noticeable, so this is important. So and this is uh something that I use really frequently. So let's put it in S, S class. That's damage reduction right over there. Nothing else more needs to be said. Next one is Basilica. Yeah, okay, so let's talk about Basilica for a little bit. This used to be a completely different skill. Uh, what it does before, for those of you players uh, right now who didn't get to experience Basilica in its uh, ancient form, what it does is it creates a space around the, the priest, okay, where if you stand on it, you can't be attacked but you also cannot attack so it's basically a time out sort of thing like a time first sort of thing that you can use it's disabled in war of imperium because of course uh it's it's a cheat skill because you can just stand on the imperium let's talk about imperiums later um we'll just stand on the imperium and then you activate basilica and then nobody will be able to destroy your guild's imperium it's, it's basically guild versus guild thing let's talk more about it later uh so uh yeah and it used to uh consume a lot of of catalysts as well if i remember correctly it consumes one blue gemstone one yellow gemstone one red gemstone and one holy water for each cast but it's actually pretty broken because like you know you can heal the people inside as a priest but it kind of continually drains your sp so that's that's what that's what it is basilica which is which is like like a church right so it's it's basically a safe haven a sanctuary for for your party mates but uh i on my long years of experience, I've never actually seen this in, in like, you know, I've seen it in novelty, like, and also in PvP, but in PvE, it's, it's not, you know, there's no practical use for it because you can just be attacking stuff, right? It, in, in, in this game, the best defense is usually the best offense because, like, if you kill the stuff in your stream, then you wouldn't have to be worrying about damage. So now it enhances uh, the player by giving magic damage and physical damage, which is actually really good. So this is actually always level 5. Before, nobody used to get this skill. But now it's actually part of the build, uh, the meta build. I keep clicking on over here. Okay, so let's not 
open my, my Discord. Uh, okay, so let's put it at S class. That's really good. Blessing is also S class. Let's talk about it for those who are not familiar with the skill. Just just because. Okay, so it places temporary buff on a single target that increases strength, dexterity, intelligence, and accuracy. What? Okay, that's new. The skill also purchases a target of curse and stone statuses. Oh, stone curse. Okay, so that's new as well. Stone status? Stone curse? The stone curse used to be... The counter for stone curse used to be status recovery. Okay, so I don't know. Curse? I know curse. That's like your person has a grim reaper uh overlaid on your on your character so that's and then it slows your movement speed so that's curse uh, among other things and uh stone curse i didn't know that this is probably new because a lot of these things there was a huge update in 2024 that uh kind of released this uh new classes and updated some of the skills so some of these are not what i remember them to be strength in dex definitely but hit hit is all dex gives you hit already so this is huge will you now get more hit bonus on top of the hit that you get from the decks i don't know but yeah definitely s class right over there uh next one is what is this it's a holy water icon oh it's sacramenti okay so this is be a sacramenti benedictio santissimi santissimi sacramenti this one stands for santissimi uh, it's a latin superlative i'm not sure is it genitive ah is it genitive is it feminine masculine santissima this is supposed to be santissima okay benediction santissima sacramenti it's a superlative benediction of the most holy sacrament something like that uh you know i i, I this is kind of interesting for me because i had latin one to latin three as a non-elective when i was in high school so uh, yeah it blesses a target location Oh, it's a target location now to endow the armor of all players within. Oh, this used to be a single target spell. Okay. Uh, holy power it requires the user to have two acolyte class players. Okay, so this that's the thing. Almost nobody gets this in 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 old Ragnarok and classic Ragnarok, and until now, this is like something that nobody ever uses. So what this does is it 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 makes your character ho holy property the armor. I did create one 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 priest back in the day. Uh, that was a sacramenti main because I was playing with with a crusader and a crusader if a crusader was intelligence type The main skill was grand cross The grand cross is a really powerful area of effect skill that uh, creates a cross uh, Centered around the, the the player the crusader and deals holy property ma da magic damage to everyone standing on, on the cross or anyone near near the the character but the downside with that is it actually sacrifices a bit of your hp so you can only do it a certain number of times before you run out of hp so that's why crusaders always rolled with priests and then they would mob things and they would kill it with grand cross right so this skill i thought i thought it was a good idea but yeah it's apparently uh apparently it's hard to get two acolyte classes to stand together with you for this skill to be able for you to be able to activate this skill but once it works it works like an angeling card an angeling card is a boss card super rare you put it in on the armor and then you, your character becomes holy property so you don't get hit with with holy property attacks you don't lose hp from the skill grand cross is what i would think is what i thought you know but it's actually hard to pull this off because not everybody understands the skill so it's hard to like communicate it with another person in the middle of battle especially if you don't know each other probably going to put this in deuce really not very useful okay next skill this is canto candidus or solemn prayer or candid song solemn song candid prayer something like that okay so in Cast increase agility on the caster and the party members within range. The agi effect goes up based on the caster's job level. So the interesting thing about this is the skill increase agility increases your agility by 12 points if it's level 10. But the thing is, if you have Canto Candidus, you actually can exceed agi plus 12. That's why if you uh, pay attention, you cannot overwrite 
an Archbishop Max Canto Candidus with a basic increase, uh, with a basic single target increase agility, even at max level. Yeah, so you have to actually wait for. Uh, yeah, that's why nobody uses increased agility anymore. But you cannot target other people with Canto Candidus. It only affects you and your party members on the screen. It doesn't. You can't give it away to another player. So I still kind of use increased agility and blessing. Okay, so it's an important skill. It's it's a staple. So let's put it there. Same with what is this skill? Mm, it's is it clearance or it kind of looks the same thing? Yeah, it's clearance. Clementia is, is the next one. Yeah, both of those. Clementia and Canto Candidus is basically the same thing. Uh, it casts blessing on the caster and party members within its range. Uh, the blessing effect goes up based on the character's job level because you know uh, uh, job levels are higher. You know, so job level seventy Archbishop is also job level seventy. Uh, I think uh, a guildmate of mine mentioned that the it doesn't matter if you become a cardinal; it has lesser job levels. But the Clementia and Canto Candidus skills still bases it as it's as if you were job level 70. So that's that's I don't know if that's true. I have no way to test it. But uh yeah, just take it with a grain of salt. Actually everything in this video, <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. Okay, so that's the same thing with increased agility and blessing right over here. Even if you had max blessing because it stops at like strength in dex plus 10. Even if you had Max Blessing, you cannot overwrite an Archbishop's Clementia. Okay, so that's the thing right over there. Next, let's talk about Clarence. Okay, so back in the day, uh, the things that you would do to like remove status effects from people are like Cure, uh, Status Recovery, and uh, Lex Divina, I think. If the target is uh, this skill, will cure it. Okay, so Lex Divina is uh, a cure for silence right and what else stop poison doesn't actually a uh, slow poison doesn't actually uh yeah it does stop because uh, back then it actually just slows that's why it's called slow poison right now i don't know it, it says in the description that it stops the hp drain from the poison status effect okay so maybe that and what else uh, blessing cures you from from curse obviously increase agility cures you from decrease agility so that's that's the thing so what else uh yeah so now clearance is actually a one all and all thing remove all party members and monsters buffs debuffs and status effects uh, i got i just got this skill in the game and the description is actually kind of misleading it's actually still a single target thing it's not all party members it works on party members maybe it just works on party members and uh, uh and monsters so it removes buffs the de debuffs and status effects it kind of works the same way with the uh, paladin's battle chant but from what i remember before the battle chant actually cancels divest or strip because there's a character in the game, the Shadow Chaser or the Rogue class, right? All of the all of the classes that are rogue like rogue rogue classes, uh, in that job tree. Okay, so those classes have access to skills called divest or strip. Okay, so they can actually strip someone's armor. It, what it technically does is it applies a buff to your target that removes it's useful for pvp that removes forcibly removes their equipment okay so um a strip weapon strips the target's weapon it's kind of like yeah 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 it's very self-explanatory and then uh you get full strip which actually removes everything at once and then except for the accessories and then strip accessories so things like that gets removed by uh by battle chant I don't know if that's still the case, but that's how I used to counter soccers and rogues. If they strip me, because usually they, uh, what would happen is they would equip their um, their dagger that has high dex. Because if their dex is better than your dex, 
uh, there's a higher chance of you to be stripped of your equipment, right? So they, they'll they probably use a better weapon, a better dagger or something. I don't know. I'm not a stalker main. I don't know the, the, the basics of the skill. But uh, basically, they'll run up to you while in hiding. I, if, I was a paladin in this, in this example. So they'd run up to me. They'd strip me. They'd use backslide to back away. But little do they know, I have battle chant, and I use actually use the battle chant. So I would uh, use the battle chant and get rid of all this divest statuses, and just quickly put on all of my equipment, and then quickly uh, rebuff myself, uh, reflect, and everything, and auto guard defenders, things like that. And then when they come back, they'd be switching. To their bow and then they try to snipe me in the distance but it doesn't work anymore because i've got all my equipment on and uh, so i don't know if but ba if battle chant still works that way because can still counter uh divest uh the reason why i'm i'm telling this story is because clearance does not that's the thing that's that's my ick that's the thing that i'm <laughs> that's the thing that i'm so pissed off i am actually kind of pissed off with this skill it's useful it's important it's a must-have but it's like it's like five skill points right over there and it only raises the success chance i am so mad because there there are not enough there's not enough skill points to get everything that I want because I, I want a, a kind of like a hybrid support and uh, I, I still want Adoramas because that's my main attack skill but I want to be able to actually dish out all of these def defense uh, buffs as well I want to get sacrament of uh everything right? a full a max epiclesis everything right but that kind of takes it away because I need clearance level 5 so I'm kind of pissed off with this skill so it removes everything so you would have to rebuff so it's actually very useful it's a must-have but I'm very pissed off with that skill next is convenio okay or convention some of the party members okay so uh, your party members are scattered throughout the map you use this skill they get teleported right into you it works as the same way I imagine as the guild skill um uh, emergency call yeah so i would imagine it was a, we didn't used to have this skill archbishops didn't used to have this skill this is new okay i don't have it i don't think i'll get it because i have no actual because i have no actual use for it but uh if you're like doing like multiple clients uh, like multiple alts uh this might be a good way to uh to uh yeah to uh manage them and to make them travel together so convenient let's put it here it's not really needed but it's useful it's quality of life thing right so the next skill is cure okay so we've mentioned this skill before it cures a single target from the following status effects silence chaos and blind and consumes uh 15 sp okay blind okay blind is kind of it it uh, it decreases your hit it decreases your hit rate and kind of creates uh, a vignette uh, effect on your screen where uh you can't see far away so yeah there's kind of like a vignette thing like uh a black with with just the center spot that you can see your character it, it, you become like short-sighted right things like that chaos i'm not sure what that is uh even after seven eight years of playing the game silence of course if you have doesn't if you don't have access to lex divina you can use cure okay so this is um in early levels again this is kind of useful right if you're like first job acolyte uh playing in uh hunting in pion cave or like the low level areas and in classic ragnarok but this skill doesn't get usage in uh in, in, in and plus you have clearance so let's put it here in d uh decrease agility is something like more of a pvp type of thing i've never actually used this skill 
uh, except for a few instances where I just got it for the lulz. Uh, it works in War of Imperium, uh, it works in GVG, it works in PvP, and uh, yeah, it basically just is the complete opposite of the spell Increase Agility. Yeah, but it has a success rate. And I think Dex increases the, I don't know, if, if Dex actually affects this skill, I would imagine so, because a lot of the old skills rely on Dex to actually hit. If there's like a chance like this, but I don't know, it's not written in the description, it might have been changed, I don't know. So, uh, I don't know, it's useful in PvP, but it doesn't get much uh, usage out of it. Okay, so for those who are you don't for if, if for those who are new, if you see a skill like this, it's a, a white icon, a white bubble, a chat bubble icon. That's a passive skill. Okay, so this is a demon bane, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so uh, it raises physical attack, weapon mastery. It's a weapon mastery skill against demon and un. Excuse me. An undead race monster. So the damage is added to the physical damage given to demon and undead race monsters. Okay. So level 10 gives A plus 30 damage. I don't know if it's 30% or flat out just 30 damage. Just like that. I don't know. But uh, monks get this skill because it's a prerequisite. I believe for one of their skills. I think. But uh, for priests, not that actually useful, except if you're running a strength priest build. We'll talk more about that later. A strength priest build is someone who actually uses the physical attack. If you're full support, if you're like an intelligence type of character, you don't attack with a staff, right? Because you use the spells. But uh, there are a small percentage of priests that are actually battle priests, uh, as they are called. And they use maces. And books to actually bonk the monster and this is one of the skills that uh, they actually uh, utilize okay so it's physical damage right okay so uh, I don't know about this skill guys let's put it in D I guess it's not it's not really it's not meta anymore battle priests I don't see uh, uh, nowadays priests get a lot of agility for the animation thing but I seldom see any, uh, like, because Adoramus just trumps everything right now in the hype, in, in the priest kit. So, uh, there's that. Next up is, like, Demon Bane, ah, Demon Bane, uh, Divine Protection. So, it's the opposite of Demon Bane. It protects you from demon and undead race monsters. Level 30 gives a damage reduction of plus 30. So, this is also a, a, a prerequisite for Monk. They actually get level 10 of these. I believe but uh, yeah it's not actually that useful because you have equipment but it's a prerequisite so you have to get it next is uh, double light or double light where is it okay so this skill is actually something that I don't use also being a former FS and currently an Adoramus uh, priest I don't use the skill it summons two holy lights deals extra damage when melee attacking physical attack and magical attack so uh, it utilizes both your strength and your intelligence stat or so to speak um, your attack and magic attack values okay so physical attack and magical attack okay so uh, yeah it's for it's for uh, battle priests as well so when they're attacking it it, it, it increases their physical attack and it actually adds magical attack into it so in this game uh magical attack is quite difficult to defend against because you only get uh, a handful amount of of magic defense so this actually makes your attack really powerful but then again as you have seen earlier adoramos just completely deletes everything okay so uh yeah double light is I don't know, it's good for battle priests, but it's not useless for battle priests, but it's not meta. Okay, so next one is Epiclesis. Or uh, Epiclesis. It summons the Tree of Yggdrasil. Okay, so uh, it summons the Tree of Life that revives any dead characters within a 5x5 cell range of the tree. 
while increasing maximum HP and recovering HP and SP, that's useful. It consumes one Anchilla. This is one of the other uses of this Anchilla stone. And one Holy Water. Okay, so that's good. This is a must revive kind of thing. So if it's, it's a five by five. So you imagine it's kind of small. So uh, if you've got party members that died like right on top of each other, you can use this skill and immediately you revive them because the thing with resurrection is it has like a global cooldown kind of thing uh global cooldown situation so you kind of resurrect them one by one uh the archbishop skill if it please it's just lets you do that on one go which is good so full full supports for full supports it's actually kind of good but as i've said it's not meta it's really good, but I can't put it on S class, uh, because it's not. You, you, I imagine you're not going to use this a lot. Expiatio, or expiation, expiatio. Uh, grants the divine power to one's weapon to penetrate armors when physical and magical attacks. So it goes well in uh, hand in hand with the double light and the battle type situation, the battle priest situation so it now gives you armor penetration but then again <laughs> uh oh, yeah it uh to one's weapon to penetrate armors with physical and magical attacks so i don't know because it, it it just says slash magical attacks i don't know if this also applies with adoramus because adoramus is a magical attack so i don't know it should have been uh specified is it a physical normal attack or is it just is it just saying physical and magical attacks because of the physical and magical attack of the double light buff on your weapon so this is for battle priests as well another point of contention here is that there is an enchantment for costumes in game the high priest middle if i remember correctly no high priest lower for the lower headgear because in the game there's like a upper headgear a middle uh headgear and a lower headgear okay so there are costumes for those also garments for wings but uh for the lower headgear usually you'll get like cigarettes and pipes and uh strawberry and mouth uh romantic leaf like things like that uh you can enchant them and then one such enchantment says that for every level of expiatio learned, you get 0 0.1 second reduction of Adoramus cooldown. So that's actually one of the ways how I achieve cast cast free Adoramus. Because Adoramus takes a while to cast, believe me. If you're like a, a, a low level, uh, if you're not you know if you're not uh, 170 150 if you're around that level it's it's it's, it's it takes a while to cast and, and if there's a lot on your screen you're gonna get talked so uh yeah so the main reason the only reason why i have this is because it's a combo okay for for my stuff you know but but you can get another enchantment it's not a problem. You can get like the Archbishop lower, which one of my guildmates pointed out that it just gives you the 0.5 uh, cooldown reduction hassle free without without any conditions. But it doesn't reduce. Uh, but it doesn't. Uh, what should we call it? Yeah, so it's not incredibly useful for me, but it's needed. Okay, so let's just put it uh, in, in the middle, right? Because you can opt not to, to use the same enchantment that I'm using. Okay, so next one is Full Throttle. This is kind of like a novelty uh, skill. Exceed the limits of the body by sacrificing your own vitality to strengthen yourself for a short time. You, be, you will become horribly exhausted after the skills duration i am becoming horribly exhausted just from reading the description 
Full resource HP when cast and increases movement speed for the skill's duration. All stats plus 20%. After the skill duration ends, you will be inflicted with rebound status. During rebound status, your movement speed is lowered and your natural HP and SP recovery is disabled. Cannot be removed by dispel or clearance. 15 minute playtime cooldown. Okay, so... <laughs> I... Personally, I have never seen anyone use this skill. It's more kind of like a... Like a uh, novelty skill kind of thing that's just added to the game. It's actually pretty useless. It might have its uses. I don't know. But I don't use it. I don't want to use it. Because I don't want to be debuffed. Like, you know, natural HP and SP recovery. Let's talk about it more later. It's actually really very, very important. The next skill is Gloria. Okay. So it consumes 20 SP and temporarily boosts luck by 30% to the user and party members. So it's a party buff that increases your luck, which is one of the six main stats. Okay, so what does luck do? It luck, uh, it does a little bit of everything, right? Uh, but uh, the main reason you'll go for luck is to increase your critical rate and your perfect dodge. From the top of my head, that's the two things that I use, uh, that I, you know, that I think of when I see the word luck. Certain classes need a lot of luck, like critical assassins and uh, uh, rangers, because the luck dictates the frequency of their hawks, to of their falcons, to actually attack. Because it's uh, hunters, if you don't know, for, for the beginners, uh, hunters have companion uh, falcons. That when they do the normal attack, sometimes the falcon actually helps them to attack. And when they become a ranger, it becomes a wolf or a warg. Okay, so uh, if you have, so this skill is really important for them in classic Ragnarok Online. But I, I imagine there's a lot of OP equipments right now that yeah, the usefulness of this skill, especially if the duration is. Just 30 seconds, you have to recast it and recast it and suffer the global cooldown. It's kind of like not worth it anymore. So a lot of people just use it, uh, just get level 2 for a, uh, I think that's needed for Basilica. So there you go. It's a, uh, it's a thing. It's a prerequisite for, for Basilica. So yeah, but if you're like playing classic Ragnarok and if you're trying to build right and of course uh, there's a lot of skills this is the most skill heavy class out of all the classes uh maybe on par with wizards and sorcerers right because they have a lot of skills and you have to actually build it and there's not enough skill points to get everything that you actually want need or want okay so uh, what i would do is if i'm deciding if i need skill points i'll decrease the level of gloria from level five to level three so here's my rationale for that if you get a level five it lasts a little bit longer which means you get to recast it less if you get it a level three or level two you need to recast it more and if you're in the middle of fighting that's kind of difficult to keep up Right, so I get it a level three, so it's not too short, but I can save two more skill points to go to someplace else. So that's my glorious situation back then in Classic Ragnarok. In renewal and especially in current release, yeah, my glory is just sitting at level two. So uh, it's useful, but it's not really meta. Maybe we'll put it here. Yeah, it's 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 not good anymore <laughs> okay so let's talk about this skill is the bread and butter of healing skills so it's the first heal skill that you'll ever get you get it as an acolyte you get it very early in the game it restores hp of a single target this skill is also affected by the user's level total intelligence and magic attack versus undead property targets it inflicts holy property damage equal to half of the amount of the HP restored, acolyte characters they get intelligence, they get dexterity, they don't get strength, so you have no manner of attacking. So what you would do, obviously, is you go to Pine Cave or or stuff where there's like low level undead, and you heal bomb them. You use the skill. This is this can actually be an offensive skill for those who don't know. 
uh you press shift and then you press the hot key of where you put the the heal skill and that's how acolytes level up basically in the game so if you're new and you want to become an acolyte like me uh yeah so that's how you level up so let's put it in s because that's kind of like the main healing skill it's your f1 skill the first skill in the hot bar well most of the time yeah <laughs> All right, so let's. Uh, this skill is high heal. Okay, so this is a higher version of heal. You get it as an archbishop. It restores a lot more HP than acolyte heal. That is literally the description. I don't know if these descriptions are the actual descriptions in the game. I imagine it's so because this is a simulator. It try it tries to be as accurate as possible. All right, so healing amount plus two times two times two point three. Yada yada. For for my build, for my current uh, final build, this skill is only at level 3 because I don't have enough skill points. Yeah, because of this clearance thing. I can't get maximum high heal. Uh, because you need it for Delexia heal. Yeah, it requires a level 3 high heal as a, as a cardinal. So I'm leaving it at level 3 because I need the points somewhere else. And healing is, I imagine you don't need to heal a lot basically because you need to be killing stuff it's basically my 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 healing situation right now so yeah it's really good so i put it in s because heal if you're like a third job now heal does absolutely nothing anymore it's like you have like like my character has like forty thousand hp now and an acolyte's heal only heals you for like 3,000 damage. So if you're like dealing with a lot of damage, it takes a while for you to actually heal yourself. So I compound it with, with, with high heals. That's how I do that. Next is Imposition Manus or the Laying of Hands. Okay, so it blesses a single target's weapon to increase its attack power for one minute. It increases attack and magic attack for the user and all party members uh, around the user for 120 seconds. This used to be a different skill. Uh, in classic Ragnarok, it's a single target skill. And it only increases physical attack. So that's the difference from 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 this uh, the current release. Okay, so it's... Uh, they updated it to be a little bit more relevant. Okay, so because now it... Because I can actually use it. For myself now because back then if you're a priest you don't really cast imposition manus on yourself because it only increases the attack and as a full support priest don't really bonk enemies right so you use it mainly for archers and knights and everyone else who uses their weapons to attack yeah basically that's the difference so it's really good skill you should have it it's part of the main uh, bread and butter buffs next skill is holy light you summon the holy light to counter evil. It doesn't even. Uh, that's 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 how 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 the game feels about the skill right now. Look at the look at the description. It doesn't even give you values. Okay, so let's look, put it at D. Next is increase agility. Same with blessing. Uh, it's it's it increases your agility by twelve points. It increases your attack speed, and it also increases your movement speed. Right. So if you're like walking. Uh, you, you need to cast this on yourself. Uh, next is increased SP recovery. So, uh, enhance... Why was there two descriptions? Enhance natural SP recovery, max SP of X. How much SP restoration is increased by this skill? Increases the efficiency of SP recovering items for 2% for skill levels. Additional SP every 10 seconds. So basically, this increases the amount of SP that you gain from resting because yeah that's actually a thing you can sit down in the game and then you recover a little bit faster uh sp is mana okay so just to reiterate yeah this skill works if you're standing still if you're not moving so if it's if you're like standing in place or like sitting down in place this will will will, will kick this effect will Will, will activate and you'll see it like a blue number of of the sp that you'll recover it's actually pretty useful for sp recovery if you're like resting if you're trying to level up in 
early to middle uh game uh, yeah it's useful but uh most people would bring consumables yeah just use the mana potions or like idrassel berries or idrassel seeds and things like that to recover their sp right so uh yeah it's it's a requirement it's good that it's a requirement let's uh put it in b yeah so it's a 50 50 kind of situation here uh next is judex there's an actual build that revolves on judex instead of adoramus there are items in the game that's tailored for this but i don't know how popular it is there's like a uh an archbishop or cardinal now i guess in 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 youtube that creates content uh about this uh with the judex build i think i saw what, what was her name again mira jane i believe is it's, i forget if it's iro or not if it's the international server or not but yeah it actually can be pretty good as well but uh i don't know maybe it's more expensive or uh stuff like that but because then again, you won't have enough status points for, I mean, skill points for Adoramos if you die, if you're like, use Judex level 10. Because if you're like, if you like, do Judex level 10 and Adoramos level 10, you only have like 49 skill points left for all of this. You know, because that's like 20 points. That's steep, right? So, uh, yeah, it's uh, only either or. Or if you're willing to like sacrifice everything else, uh, you know, man, you might as well go for it. It's good. It's not as good as Adoramos. So let's put it at A. Next is Kiri Eleison or Kyrie Legion or yeah, K E. Uh, means Lord have mercy. Yeah, Kiri Eleison, uh, Christ Eleison means Christ have mercy. Creates a protective barrier. Okay, so it's a barrier skill that uh, takes 30% uh, of your HP at uh, level 10 and uh, defends for up to 10 hits. So it's either or. So it's uh, the skill ends if like the HP of the barrier runs out or you get hit 10 times. If it's level 10. So that's kind of how it works. Mm. Holy Light will immediately cancel the barrier on the targeted player. So that's kind of like the only use of Holy Light in, in Classic. In PvP, this is uh, actually useful. In Classic Ragnarok, Kyrie Legion is a useful skill because it blocks like normal attacks from like assassins and knights and things like that and if you like immediately if you're like supporting someone and they're not hitting the person the target because the target has k has ke and you want to like get rid of it immediately use holy light that's how it uh used to work you know but i don't imagine pvp to be the same way anymore because i keep comparing it to classic because there's such a huge difference onto how this is played uh, today, on how Ragnarok is played. It's really fast-paced, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of items now that would be considered OP, or, or yeah, everything is so fast and, and strong. Everything is stronger and bigger now, you know, instead of classic where it's kind of just, you know, like, almost feels like, Final Fantasy Tactics, or almost feels like uh, a turn-based game. <laughs> almost, I say that almost because of course it's not a turn-based game. It's life service. So uh, yeah, it's uh, Kyrie Legion. Some people would get Max Kyrie Legion uh, instead of Max Safety Wall. It's kind of like your preference. It's a player preference because Safety Wall kind of works the same way. It's a barrier skill, but the thing is, it's actually targeted. Safety Wall is targeted on the ground. It, protect, it protects one cell, you know, in the game, one area, uh, good for one character. If you stand in it, it's kind of like you also have Kyrie Legion, but uh, uh, the durability, right? if the damage exceeds the durability, you don't get hit with it. The Safety Wall just dis gets destroyed, but uh, the remainder of the damage doesn't get, uh, you know, transferred to you. Unlike Kyrie Legion, if uh, if you if you got 
like the barrier is 5,000 HP and then someone hits you with 10,000 normal attack uh, the 5,000 gets uh, uh, absorbed by Kyrie lesion and then the five the other 5,000 gets uh, gets through to you so it's more of like a preference because the thing is if you have you're using Kyrie lesion you can move it doesn't require you to stay inside of the safety wall so that's the thing and it's actually not a wall if you don't know this skill if you're like a beginner right if you haven't seen this skill or maybe you've seen this skill don't know it it's like a pink pillar it's not actually a wall it's a circle right so uh, yeah it actually it requires you to stand on it if you're standing on it then you won't get hit so uh yeah Kyrie Legion, kind of like, uh, it's really good because, uh, but it's not S-Class because it gets cancelled easily, especially when you're dealing with high-level mobs, right? And if there's like too much stuff in your screen, too much enemy in your, too much enemies in your screen, it kind of gets cancelled almost immediately. But it's kind of useful for walking around uh, the, the poison uh, stage in, in Face Worm. Because Kyrie Legion actually absorbs the damage from the poison. Because it's not technically poison in the game. It's like a poison field masquerading as... It's, it's a field of damage masquerading as a poison field. If you walk into it, you get damage, but you don't actually get poisoned. So it's... Yeah, and, and it works as if... Because the script in the game actually treats it as as if a monster is attacking you so that kind of gets absorbed by uh Kyrie Legion as well if uh if you're like you know you get into a, a, a point where you can do face worm it's one of the daily quests you know so that you can gain money from from that you can gain zenny from that to to actually fund your your equipment so that's the thing you have to do every day Okay, so maybe we'll do another video talking about daily quests, but I don't know. Let's reserve that for a later video. Next is uh, the two laudas are actually needed. The lauda Agnus and lauda Ramus. Agnus is sheep, right? Agnus, Agnus Dei, lamb, lamb of God. Okay, so it's a lamb. Lauda Agnus is uh, the lamb. Recover freezing stone curse dark curse frozen crystallization and burning of all par party members so these are kind of dealing with like new status effects new age status effects okay so lauda ramos and lauda Agnus. okay so it's needed and actually the uh the headgear i mentioned a while back the sacred crown is actually a combo with these skills so it has like increases the effect against neutral ghost uh unholy and shadow property monsters by the level of you because you'll see a lot of those kind of, of of items in the game before we didn't used to have those kind of items but now we have items that combos with the level of the skill that you've learned so for every just like xp asho i was explaining a while ago there's some effects now that uh increases as the level of a certain skill increase so per level of loud anus uh, you read stuff like that per level of clearance learned so there are things like that in the game so lauda ramos and lauda anus it's central for sacred crown because it's a core item of the adoramus build but it's not actually really i don't know maybe it's good let's put it in s class because it's one of the few things that actually cancel out some of the status effects that don't also erase your buffs so let's put it in an s maybe it deserves an s this skill is times two that's the lex eterna skill the law of eternity it consumes uh 10 sp and weakens a single target so it can take double damage so this is a debuff you target i i guess it hasn't changed okay it cannot be cast oh that's the change i just i just jinxed myself uh it cannot be cast on a frozen or petrified target before you used to be able to cast this 
on a frozen target because what would happen is if you're like partying it with partying it with, with with a wizard storm gust is in heavy use back then so what it does is it's, it's an area of effect water element skill that sees the targets if not kill them right and then if you want to kill it but not cast another storm gust because if you cast storm gust on a frozen target it doesn't get affected yeah because a frozen target changes from its actual property into water property and water doesn't affect water property so if it if, if, if a target is frozen it doesn't get affected by another storm gust okay so what would happen is you'll cast jupiter thunder on it or jupiter thunder is what would happen is you'll cast jupiter thunder on it because wind is strong against water right and to amplify the damage you cast lex aterna on the frozen target so if you deal 3,000 damage with the Jupiter Thunder, now you're dealing 6,000 damage and ensures the target is dead without casting another Storm Gust. You know, this is stuff like that, but nowadays it's not really that important because you cast so fast, you just cast the skill regardless. You cast, oh, you're dealing uh, 3, 3 million damage with, with, with Jupiter Thunder now, so nowadays, you cast another Jupiter the Thunder for another 3 million damage. Don't need this. You know, so, so uh, I know about Lex, but uh, uh, it's good, but it's, 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 it has, it's another one in the list that has fallen out of usage, I imagine. You know? So I, I'm not really in the, in the end, end game yet because I'm not a Cardinal yet. But uh, yeah, I, I for myself, I'm, I'm not using this skill a lot anymore. Next, Divinar, the Divine Law. It's a silence uh, skill, okay? So, back then, uh, this used to be a single target skill. Uh, you target a single individual or a monster with the skill, and then they get silenced. If you're, if, if it's successful, they can't use any skills. Let's see if, if it works the same way. Attempts to abnormal status silence. Okay, a single target duration can be decreased upon the status of the target if the target is already silenced. This will cancel the the silence effect. Okay, so it's a silence skill. Uh, still, so uh, it's really good, but I don't know about uh, maybe in PvP. It's a fifty-fifty skill. I'm not sure about it. Uh, Mace Mastery is the next skill, okay. So this is for battle priests as well. Uh, enhances attack. Uh, it's like imposition. It's like the old imposition manus. It enhances your attack with mace class weapons. So you're actually using maces. If you're using mace, your attack goes up. If you like learn the skill, you get damage plus 30 and critical plus 10. I don't know if it's critical rate or critical damage. Because those are completely different things. But yeah. Maybe critical rate. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, yeah, it's not meta, but it's not useless. Like, it's for battle priests. Uh, let's, put, uh, it's, let's put it in C. It's not meta. Magnificat, which, which is an actual song. It's really good because you know what it does? It doubles the SP and HP. Oh, what? Doubles the SP recovery rate. Why doesn't it include HP? Because back then, and even until now, because if you read it, HP and SP recovery increased if you use this skill. There's actually like a notification for it. But I don't know, the description, I don't know if the description is just jank or I don't know. So uh, this skill, uh, the same reasoning with Gloria, if you're gonna get level 5 or level 3 or level 2 or just the prerequisite for some skill, or something because uh yeah it just increase it just doubles your sp recoveries it's really important for spellcasters and people not not just spellcasters not just spellcasters but generally everyone who like spams skills right so that's s class definitely magnus exorcismus or the great exorcism is also a really good skill it's a uh, it wasn't a popular skill back in the day because it takes forever to cast 
But as I've said, uh, a number of equipment already just reduces the cast time for for ME. And uh, yeah, it's an area of effect. It creates a fat cross on the ground and uh, every demon. It used to be just uh, like undead and demon. I think it doesn't also affect demon. Shadow property? Uh, like the shadow undead and demon and ghost property not all of those are affected by this skill and of course other property monsters also didn't used to get affected by this skill but with the recent update they because they're trying to streamline everyone where we're in everyone kind of is in is able to like level up by themselves they they balance it in a way that everyone is is capable of advancing their levels without the need for a party member right so uh yeah they changed magnus exorcismus to uh also hit yeah basically it hits everything now it doesn't need to be undead anymore it it, it hits everything now okay so it's good because it's an aoe skill uh the difference from adoramus is that you don't select uh the target it's actually casted on the ground so you can for maximum damage you can put magnus exorcismus on the guys for like a boss fight or something you can put magnus exorcismus on the ground so that deals damage ta, 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 ta. and then you cast adramus on top on top of so while you're dealing Adoramus damage you're also dealing Magnus Exorcismus damage if the target is standing on the thing so yeah it's pretty good meditation increases the player's maximum SP and SP regeneration rate it also increases the amount of HP that is restored using the heal skill so this is one of the ways uh, of how high priest used to have it's it's, it's the heal skill of the acolyte is like it's really hard to increase the the amount of, of, of that's how it was back in the day it's really difficult to achieve 2000 heal once you have 2000 heal you're like the goat right you're like a good fs you're like a good priest right and it's difficult and i remember when the high priests came out we didn't used to have archbishop back then High Priest, there's a huge spike of heal increase because of this skill. I used to always level 10 this as an, F as an FS and everyone would just be in shock. Because not everyone understood what this does. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, not really everybody pays a lot of attention with, with passive skills. Usually they just get it for, for the prerequisite or something. Especially for this skill where it's not really a prerequisite for anything so it, it just kind of ends up being ignored so <clears throat> so if you got man mana issues uh you'd get this because if you didn't have soul enchanted shoes or like variant shoes or like i don't know stuff that increased sp in some way in some form or another back in the day those were some of the the ways you can increase sp you'd get this skill and as a side effect it also increases your hp skill hp recovery but i don't know how how it's it's relevant now so maybe we'll put it in 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 b because you do, don't nearly get enough points for this right next uh what's next offertorium it's actually really good right so it increases your healing power once again uh at level five it increases it at 150 but it also increases your SP cost. Okay, but by three hundred percent. So it's a complete. Uh, it's an opposite of Magnificat. It. It. I don't know if it's. Yeah. There you go. This skill cannot be used in conjunction with Magnificat. So if you remember, Magnificat is our SP recovery skill. It's supposed to be always on. It doubles the speed, uh, the rate at which you recover your mana, and Ophertorium does the opposite. If you're like healing people, you run out of you run out of uh, mana faster. In exchange, you get healing. so it's like borrowed power, uh, kind of thing, right? Uh, so uh, 
yeah, for clutch situations, I can see this uh, really being very useful, and it actually cures some 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 status effects as well. Uh, bleed is actually. Let me check if it's, I'm right. Cures status effects: darkness, curse, poison, uh, delusion, chaos, bleeding. Yes, bleeding is actually really bad because it completely disables your SP recovery and HP recovery. Your natural HP and SP recovery. So no matter how many times you cast Magnificat, you're not gonna get SP back over time, as long as you're like, you know, bleeding. So that this cancels the thing, you know. It kind of works the same way with clearance. I don't know if clearance also removes bleeding, probably. But uh, yeah, the thing is, uh, clearance is a uh, yeah. Maybe I I just remembered I used to be in the lower left half of the screen, so maybe some of these things. Uh, you're you're not seeing because I'm I'm on top of things. But yeah, so let me just adjust this so you can see it. Okay, so uh, yeah, but clearance is removes everything else above, so you'd have to rebuff yourself. So having offertorium at least at level one. I know a lot of people get this at level five for the healing power increase because heal doesn't do a lot of healing nowadays. So you can get 150 percent healing at 1.5 times the healing healing power so it's kind of good okay so let's put it with magnificat basically because they're like two sides of the same coin uh next is oratio duration it decreases the holy resistance of all enemies on the screen for 30 seconds it's like a nuke that debuffs everyone on the screen with a certain success rate as you can see here and all of a sudden they are weak to holy attacks such as Adoramus and Julex and Magnus Exorcismus. So the thing about this is I don't want to be like, you know, I want to attack and attack and attack. Everything is so fast paced. Attack, attack, attack. I don't want to be Oratio and then attack. Oratio and then attack. So maybe if you're like doing a boss fight, you Oratio them first. And once it hits, you can do like, uh, do your thing now. But uh, yeah. There's a combo item with this that requires this to be level 10 to get the full effect. Because like for every level of Oratio earned, learned. So uh, I'm not sure if it's like the Holy Stick and the Boots of Punishment combo. Um, I, I don't, uh, I forgot because I skipped that item. I skipped uh, the Boots of Punishment because it was so expensive. I might as well get the next best thing, which is the Moaning of Evil Spirits. So, uh, yeah, Oratio is, is really very good. Uh, it's meta. Oh, no, where did I put it? Uh, it's meta, but I don't particularly use it. Uh, you know, I don't particularly use it, but I'll put it at S because there's not a lot of skills. But, yeah, because it changes things drastically, right? So those who are not weak to holy damage are now weak to holy damage. It drastically changes things. That's my S class. It drastically changes things for the better uh next is a uh, numa actually it's a very simple skill let's put it at s okay so let me explain to you how this skill works e each cast consumes 10 sp it creates a green cloud on a targeted location that blocks ranged physical damage for 10 seconds it's actually a pretty simple skill it works the same way with safety wall you target the ground one cell you stand near it or on directly on it and range damage don't hit you. And unlike safety wall or Kirielison, it doesn't have like a, an HP. It doesn't have a durability. As long as the Numa is there, no ranged attack will ever hit you. And then you're like, you have surrounded, you're surrounded with enemies north, south, east, west, but your AOE, like, like uh, Dragon's Breath only covers this area. Uh, Adoramus, it has a wide range, but like it only fucks one general direction, right? So uh, use Numa on yourself, and all of a sudden, everyone is missing you. Every single one of them is missing you. It's a lifesaver. It's a fairly simple skill. It's an accolade skill, but it's really very good. So let's put it in this class. Next is Prefacio. Prefacio. 
Uh, cast skill reality on, on all party members. Defense effect goes up when more party members join. So, yeah, basically, you just get this as a prerequisite level 5. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this skill. I still pretty much prefer Kiri Elison, but uh, it's a good backup because like you can use it hand in hand. The reason why I dislike this skill is because it's a terrible cooldown. It takes too long when you're like being assaulted by every single one and you're getting fucked by all of the monsters all around you. Use pretty fast show Sheen Barrier, okay, and then just you're hit, you're getting hit multiple times it just goes away immediately right and then it's on a long cooldown you can't use it again so it's just a party version of kiri Edison. it's uh the whole screen uh, your party members get the effect of the barrier but uh yeah it has a long cooldown so I'm kind of like 50-50 on this skill, so I don't use it much, it's not useless, but it's not terrible, but uh, yeah, it's 50-50 on that one. Uh, next one is Redemption. <laughs> okay, so this is a, just like Holy Light, this is a quest skill by the way, I didn't get, uh, get to mention that with Holy Light. So basically you don't spend points for this skill, because it's not part of the, of the skill tree. You don't spend points on this skill. You learn it. I, I don't know if it's it's if it's still the case though. If they actually retconned uh, the quest skills now, because before you used to have to do a quest to get holy light, and I remember the same with the redemption because in my friend group I was the only one who had this skill. So basically, it's a sacrifice skill. It's a, yeah, yeah, because we don't have Epiclesis back then. This is the only group resurrection skill that we had back then. So what happens is in your entire screen, as long as you see your party members, maybe, so it's useful for like, if you're, you don't have direct line access to the person because you can't go around the wall because there are like enemies on the wall. You can't, uh resurrect fast enough because you don't have like level 4 resurrection maybe you have level 1 resurrection and the casting time takes forever and you don't have clip under a cast or like you will die before you even if you have clip under a cast and your cast is uninterruptible you would die before you actually finish casting and kiri Ellison is not enough okay so those are the conditions right <laughs> god you could use redemption to just like revive the player as long as he's on the street without direct line access. If you're like, even if you're like separated with the wall, as long as the player is on your screen, the party member needs to be a party member on your screen. This skill activates, but it reduces your HP to, to one because what it happened is you die to save everyone else. So that's the, the lore of the skill, but you don't actually die. You get reduced to one HP so you're still alive but in essence you've died already why because you actually incurred the death penalty for this yeah you lose XP for this because in Ragnarok when you die you lose experience but, uh, yeah the damn trace is not something that we'll use next is resurrection each cast consumes a blue gemstone. Okay, so this is a primary skill that uses the blue gemstone. Basically, if you're an FS back in the day, the reason why you have blue gemstones is because of this skill. It allows you to revive someone who has died. End of story. So, uh, uh, back then, uh, uh, each level of resurrection decreases the time that you have to cast the skill, where level 4 is insta-cast. So it's almost always a priority to instacast resurrection. Also, you can use resurrection in the same manner as turn undead. Okay, if you just uh the same with the heal bombing, you know, if you press shift and then press resurrection on your skill bar, uh then target an undead uh enemy, there's a chance that uh you would also one hit 
uh, KO uh, the enemy. And this kind of works in PvP as well, because there are instances... I don't know if it's still meta now, because there, there used to be... Or rather, there's still... You know, the evil druid card. So what it does is, you know, you know, there's been, you know, there's this theme of changing your character's property to like a gain an advantage, an element advantage on certain attacks. Okay. When you're trying to defend against uh, certain attacks. Right. So uh, um, there's this evil druid card and you'd slot it on your garment. And then when you wear it, you change into an undead property. Okay? Now, uh, once you're undead property, when someone heals you, you take damage. And Resurrection and Turn Undead has a chance of one-hit KOing you as well. Next is Ruach, which is actually a spirit or the divine wind or something like that. Each cast consumes 10 SP, reveals hidden enemies uh, within 5x5 five five cell. If the, he if, uh, what? If the hidden is hidden. If, if the enemy is hidden, it's like 145%, right? Because it's a detection skill, and if you detect something with it, you deal damage to it. So, yeah, it's basically just a situation. It's not strong. It's 145%. It's not strong by any measure. But, uh, yeah, so there's that. It's a detection skill. It's needed. It's a utility skill. It's needed. It's not super OP. It doesn't really change things. There are cards in the game that uh, shows you, like, hidden things. Right? If, 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 if you, like... I mean, hidden targets, I mean. So, uh, if it's, like, an assassin that's in cloaking, a thief class that's in hiding, it kind of, like, shows you on the screen uh it's as if they're not hiding so uh next up is sanctuary this skill uh this is sanctuary this is sanctuary right yeah sanctuary okay so uh this is an aoe s uh skill it's a heal that you put on the ground okay so that's basically it uh my preference is level 7 sanctuary because it doesn't get any better than that only the duration increases but you, you need the points but if I don't have enough points, like if you, I want to get something else, yeah, I won't go for level 7 Sanctuary. But this skill is quite useful because it's the only skill, I think, yeah, back then. I don't know now because I don't know some of the healing skills if, if it affects the Imperium. We've been talking about the Imperium in the... In the uh, guild versus skill situation because in Ragnarok you know, the, uh, there's like these castles like you occupy them you put the Imperium on it so if your guild has the Imperium on it you occupy that castle so it's kind of like a uh, capture the flag situation but like less capture the flag and more smash the flag so the enemies come into your agit or your castle and then they make their way to the throne room and on the throne room uh, a big yellow crystal is in there and that's called the imperium that's called that's why it's called the war of imperium and once you uh, you try to destroy it it can be affected by magic i think you all you only have to like do physical attacks on it that's why there are breaker builds that are specialized to break the Imperium. So, uh, one of the ways to recover the Imperium's health is through this skill sanctuary. And the max it can go for without using any uh, modification cards like Bexogen card is like uh, to get level 7 sanctuary. Because it's like healing value 777. That, has, that much hasn't changed. But, uh, it's like uh, diminishing returns after that because level 7, 8, 9, and 10 only increases the duration. Whereas you can just recast the skill. Yeah. So that's the thing. Healing the Imperium doesn't work. Or if it works, it's not efficient. Because you're supposed to be healing the teammates that are defending the Imperium. Okay, so that's the thing. It's actually, it also hits undead enemies. Kind of works the same way with Magnus Exorcismus, but 
weaker, I guess. So, so it's an S class for me. Safety walls also like on the same with uh, Kiri Ellison. It's a uh, it's a, uh, a barrier skill. Uh, this is the sign of the cross, I think. Signus Crucis. Uh, where is it? Yeah, Signum Crucis. It decreases it decreases the hard defense of all undead priority and demon race monsters and caster streets. It works the same way with 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 Horatio. Basically, it's the little brother of the Oracho skill. So let's put it the same in the same vein as that. Why am I lagging? Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, not as good as Oracho, I guess. So let's put it at A. Next is Silentium. Or Silentium, yeah, Silentium. Cast Lex Divita to the target within a certain range from the caster. So it's like an area of effect silence, right? It's useful in PvP, but I don't know much about it in, in PvM. It's not really used that much. It's just, I don't know, we'll split it in 50-50 about that. Because because it could be really useful in, in Guild versus Guild in the War of Imperium. I'm not even sure if it's activated in War of Imperium or PvP, but yeah, it's just, I mean, it's, it's useful. It's, it, silence is always useful because it 100% prevents anyone from using a skill, which is the main way they deal damage. You use this on a priest and it's game over. They can't cure themselves. <laughs> they can't heal. Yeah, because if they're silenced, they're, they're, there's no clearance. Yeah, stop poison. Okay, so this is the slow poison. Okay, so it stops the drain from poison. So it's with the new... Because as I have mentioned back then, this... Skill. That's why it's called slow poison. It usually just slows the poison effect. So instead of it ticking, instead of the poison proccing every three ticks, it would now proc every like five ticks or so, something like that. It prolongs the the thing, so the timer runs out without you getting more damage but poison isn't really threatening nowadays except if it's like a guillotine cross poison or one of the third class poisons or the fourth class poisons i don't know if it this works against that so uh it'll probably be dead before you could even think about using this skill so this moves at c it's not it's a utility skill it's not good but it's not useless it's like that spiritual thrift uh, reduce the amount of SP that uh, is consumed by skills. As an FS, I really wanted this skill because anything that gives me better SP management is something that I, I want, right? But the thing is, yeah, it ha it comes at a great cost because it, because it requires you, it's, it's prerequisite, is Mace Mastery level 10, which is something that you're you won't really use because it's for battle priests. It's for bulk priests, right? So, uh, yeah. And the main reasoning for this is because on paper you would think that oh, this is very useful for full supports. This could be something that's really good for use for for for, for support characters, right? But uh, yeah. But the main reasoning for this is that bulk priests, like they have, they can't put a lot of status points in it. Because they're investing in strength and critical uh, luck and agility because they need to attack quickly. So if they're like investing a high amount of stats on those one, two, three decks, four luck, on those four skills, on those four stats, you, you won't really have enough status points for a high amount of int. Yeah. So this kind of offsets that for uh, battle priest type of players, I think. So I think that's the rationale for or the rationale for 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 this spiritual thrift thing. So yeah, you won't really get it as as an FS because there could be better things that you could spend the, the skill points for instead of mace mastery. So yeah, let's put it at D because you're never probably going to get it. Unless you're a battle person. So status recovery is, uh, where is it? Yeah. 
Could zip survive SP, cures a single target from frozen and stone and stun, and things like that. Status recovery, usually for immobilization skills. Uh, status recovery is really good. Uh, it changes things because like it's an instant cure that doesn't also remove your buffs. So, uh, but it's not really god tier kind of thing. So let's put it at A. Uh, Suffragium. Suffragium. Uh, bless us uh, for another person. It decreases their variable casting time. This is one of the very few skills that actually does this. Right? The only other one is blessing because it, it increases your dex and dexterity also decreases your casting time, your variable casting time. Sacrament is a different thing, is a whole different thing on its own because it decreases fixed cast time instead of the variable cast time. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's really good in early game and in classic Ragnarok. It's it's good in like early game and classic Ragnarok because you wouldn't have the if you're like new and if you're like a low B because you wouldn't have the enough you wouldn't have the equipment for for enough variable casting time reduction to achieve fast cast. So this skill really helps a lot. But in the event that uh, you don't need it anymore, yeah, like you just reset and remove skills from from the suffragium skill. So yeah, it's really it's really good. So uh, it's a good skill, but as I've said, uh, it, it it falls out of usage at the later stages of the game. So it's really good, but it's not god tier. Teleport is god tier, really. It's really good because it's it's a mobility skill. Uh, teleport, uh, level one teleport allows you to uh, walk, teleport to a random spot in the map. So it's useful if you're like, you know, going around places. And level two teleport allows you to warp back to your respawn point. There are things like giant fly wings that teleports. Uh, uh, people all at the same time, butterfly wings that instantly teleport you. These are consumables. But uh, honestly speaking, the way that I play, this is just my personal preference, play style, okay? Uh, the way I play uh, Ragnarok is the minimum amount of consumables. If I can do it without consuming anything, that's how I do it. Yeah, because that's money. You, the, the, that's sustainability for me. It's not sustainable. Am I not getting enough money from hunting and from my daily quests? Probably, yes, I'm getting enough money, but I don't want to spend it. I don't want to be bothered. By, I, I just want to log in the game and go directly hunting. I don't want to manage consumables. Unless it's for like a really important thing, like War, Imp War of Imperium. If 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 I come into uh, that stage, where I actually participate in our guilds, uh, thing because I'm kind of new. I just came back to the game and I'm trying to relearn some of the stuff, and I'm not really into PvP or GVG just yet. So maybe I don't know. Or if like if it's a major boss fight, then I prepare certain things but like if it's just for like hunting and things like you know casual and things like that if i don't have to use a consumable i won't <laughs> that's the way i play the game next one is turn undead the skill that turns the undead so this skill is actually kind of uh, interesting there are builds that are centered around uh this skill right so what it does is it's a skill you target a undead, an undead priority monster with it, and then it, you roll the dice on it, and if it's successful, it's a one-hit KO. Okay? Yeah, so you see where I'm getting with this? And that chance is uh, affected by the monster's current HP, not the max HP, okay? The monster's current HP, the weaker it is, the better chance of success. Uh, just like Pokemon. Uh, 
uh, the caster's intelligence, the caster's dex, and the caster's luck. Yeah. So, uh, Gloria is a really good skill uh, to, to, to go along with this. Yeah, it's a one-hit KO. So, there's this monster called Anubis, which is a really high-level monster. Uh, because back then, the XP tables were kind of different. Uh, you can, like, kill a monster who levels ahead of you, right? And you get all the XP. It's a flat XP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because before, it used to be flat flat rates, right? The XPs used to be... Yeah, yeah. There's an XP table for it. And this monster gives this experience and so on and so forth in renewal it kind of got changed when the anubis thing wasn't the thing anymore it's unbelievable and when you see the big numbers on the screen like it's a funny big funny number right it's one hit ko yeah it's really good but uh those were the old times nowadays it's fallen out of usage as well I'm not entirely sure if people actually use this skill anymore so yeah it's in d next one we're almost there bear with me uh vituperatum uh we do used to have this skill so basically it's an aoe lex eterna so if you remember we talked about lex, lex eterna it's it's like the two times damage but now it's an area of, of effect uh affecting a multiple target so again uh, you're supposed to be attacking not debuffing so uh yeah so let's put it in the same vein as lex uh eterna it's a uh, sister skill uh whereas where it's not incredibly terrible but it's you're not gonna use it but basically yeah unless you're supporting okay maybe it's a better version of lex eterna it's a 50 50 on that one because then if you're like supporting other players you're not doing it but, but you have no reason not to attack that's the thing adoramus is so strong you have no reason to let the other player just do all the damage you should be dealing damage yourself as well if you're like in a situation that calls for it i don't know because i'm not in the end game content yet warp portal is a really good uh uh like uh movements uh mobility skill because it warps you to places that you visited before so what you do is you type slash memo and then you can memo three times the fourth one bumps the first one so uh you have three uh you have three points that you can control uh, uh, i mean sorry sorry you have four points that you can warp to the first one is always your save point so your respawn point so you can con kind of control that one can kind of change it frequently and then the three points are memorization points so you type slash memo and then that saves it in in the prompt in your in your warp portal prompt when you use the skill warp portal so you can memorize for up to three spots that is teleport enabled because some maps are you can't warp there you can't memorize you can't memo that map back in the day you could teleport in dungeons you could warp portal directly into a level three of a dungeon of all places yeah but that changed and you can only warp portal into the entrance of the dungeon now so still kind of useful if you're not vip because if you're vip on iro you can actually warp to certain places or if you're in a guild that has warpers but i tend to refrain from using that because a lot of things could go wrong with the character so i just don't want to be blamed if if push comes to show uh Colusei heal is the next skill it's a hp recovery skill for all party members around the caster additional heal given based on the party member number so 15 cells range aoe that's almost the entire screen that's really far uh yeah, because 15 cells. If this is center, you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's almost the entire screen. And, uh, yeah, it's just heal. It's a little bit stronger than than heal, but it's still heal. Yeah, it's it's, it's good because it's, it's, it, uh, it helps with sanctuary. If you're trying to heal a group of people all at once, it's really good. 
so uh let's put it as class l also because it's, it's a good skill okay this one is renovaccio it it heals you it's a heal over time but the heal effect is so minuscule that uh, i know there are, there's a bell yeah there's a better cardinal skill for this so there's an upgrade we're waiting on that okay uh last but certainly not the least is the sacrament skill this skill used to be the bread and butter of the fs archbishop right this is huge because back then this is the only thing that decreases your fixed cast time and it for for, for quite a huge chunk as well 50 percent i think in game it's already 70 percent this is huge like the lack of the current release equipment nowadays because there's a lot of meta there's a lot of op there's a lot of uh op items there's a lot of combos there's, like decreases your fixed gas time there's grading now i that's something that i still have to study because i'm not familiar with the grading system <laughs> I don't know because back then you used to be a only able to refine stuff to plus 10 and then plus 11 came out uh, plus up to plus 20 came out and things like that so this is really very good but as you notice uh, it does have a steep uh skill point uh requirement so that's the thing right so a lot of people tend to skip this because uh, on their final builds at the end of the game, you already have uh, equipment or costume enchantments or ratings or whatever that actually reduces your fixed gas time more than you already need or for what you already need them for. So that kind of makes sacrament, you know, a redundant skill or something that's fallen out of usage, which is a recurrent theme in this video so uh yeah so it's totally up to you if you, if you get this in the beginning of course you get this skill because it increases uh it increases it decreases the cast time for your adoramus which is really good you know if you're trying to level up if you're in the mid game or stuff like that it's really useful but in the end when you get you, you get the stuff that you actually need when you get like like the really good equipment yeah you can you can reset and and take those five points somewhere else okay so this is kind of like it's not mana anymore but it's really good because it's fixed gas time there's not a lot of things that uh reduces uh, fixed gas time so for me it's a 50 50 kind of situation over here obviously we have cardinal skills but uh, uh I'm still not a cardinal, so I can't comment on these skills, and I can only like read them, and from 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 description, I can kind of guess what they do, but uh, I I don't have any actual useful insight for it yet because I'm not a cardinal yet. So we'll save that for another video. So that concludes our tier list. <laughs> oh wow, yeah! I hope you appreciate this video. Uh, you can catch me on Twitch. I'm still trying to set up my my stream, but once I I do, uh, yeah, I'm planning to stream this game plus a bunch of other games. I've just returned to gaming, and there's still a lot of games that I haven't uh, played. So we'll check them out, and we'll try to see uh if we can bring our long-term experience as an mmorpg healer into the table and try to create content i guess